Hey everybody, Derek here, here to bring another video for The Walking Dead, countdown to the start of Season 7. Uh, we are still several months away from October when I presume The Walking Dead will return, and I think that many of us are anticipating the return more than we have in the past, uh, given the way that Season 6 ended. And what I have planned for these first couple of videos are just some general predictions about what I think is going to happen in the first half of Season 7. Plot lines, things from the comics that may carry over, um, as well as some things I hope to see, things I think that might make this season very, very great, as well as some concerns that I have about uh, The Walking Dead's first half of Season 7, things that may uh, not be so great, or things that I hope uh, the show does not do. And that is what I have planned for these next couple of videos. So this is going to be a general type of predictions video, um, as well as the next couple. I'm going to try to divide them up into parts. If you are not caught up with The Walking Dead and you do not want to be spoiled in any way, this video will contain information from the comics as well as the TV show. So if you don't want to be spoiled, exit now because otherwise you will be spoiled. Okay, so as many of you know, when the show left off, um, we had Negan finally introducing himself to not only the audience, but to Rick's group. Um, the group had been hearing a lot about him. They had killed many of his uh, men and women that were part of his army. And Negan had had enough of it, which I, you know, can't blame him for in retrospect, but doesn't mean I have to like him, and I certainly don't. Um, and we have the iconic scene from issue 100 of the comic books where Negan comes out, gives his speech, says, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, you guys work for me now, it's the way that it's done, and for everything that you've done in the past, and to teach you a lesson, and to let you know how serious I am, I'm going to kill one of you with my baseball bat Lucille. And we know that this does happen, we see it happen, however, we don't know who it is. Uh, the show neglected to tell us that. They switched the uh, perspective of the camera, so somebody was killed, but we don't know who. And obviously, many of us want to know about that. Um, and I've given my predictions on that. Uh, if you want to check that video out, you can go and look at my history and take a look at that. My predictions still have not changed and probably will not unless the trailer reveals more information. But obviously, many of us are kind of wondering, well, what does this mean for the show? What does this mean for Rick's group, for Alexandria, for the Hilltop? What what does this all mean? And for the saviors as well? Well, the comic books definitely, as always, provide a little bit of uh, a perspective of what might happen. And once in the comic books, which is a spoiler, of course, we know that Glenn is the victim in the comic books from Negan. Um, Negan was the one who killed Glenn. And, of course, after this happens, Rick's group goes to the hilltop because that's originally where they were going um, in the first place. And now, of course, the, the reasons were different. Um, in the TV show, of course, we have Maggie who has been having stomach pains, maybe having problems with the baby. And when they get there, um, they basically reveal, hey, um, Glenn's been killed, we've been hit by Negan, we've met Negan, uh, and we just wanted to let you guys know that this happened. And of course, this shocks uh, many individuals at the hilltop, because in fact, in the comics, Gregory never met Negan. Gregory made a deal with Negan, but it was through his people. In fact, if you read that that volume, Gregory literally is, is like, wait, you met Negan? Wow. Did you tell him about the deal that we made? Like, he's, of course, concerned. And a lot of people are shocked because they didn't even know whether Negan existed. They thought maybe he was just somebody that was a, a figurehead, kind of like Big Brother in the novel 1984. They didn't really know that Negan existed. He's not the guy that comes out to the front lines and takes action. But in this case, he did. And, of course, what ends up happening in the comic books is that Rick realizes that the threat 
of Negan and the Saviors is more than what he ever could have anticipated. And this, of course, is what happens in the TV show as well. Rick's group thought, based on the information that the Hilltop gave them, that there was just maybe 20 or 30 Saviors, that that's all it was. They thought they'd taken care of everything, but they came to realize they were wrong. And in the comic books, Negan does have different outposts that the people that he controls, like the Hilltop or the Kingdom, or in this case Alexandria, that they would deliver supplies there. And I think that part of the reason for that is so Negan is not put uh, in danger. It is a smart thing to do. If you don't know where to attack, you're not going to attack. And and basically, it kind of lets uh, the Saviors and Negan know when something has happened, if an outpost is attacked, and it protects Negan at the sanctuary. So, obviously, in the TV show at this point, what I think is really going to happen right off the bat in the first episode is that, obviously, we're going to see who was killed. And from there, the question is going to be, well, Rick the rest of the group, this has happened to you, what are you going to do now? And obviously, in everybody's minds, there's going to be this, this hurt, this pain, this sadness, this anger, the want and need for revenge, a lot of different emotions that I think they're going to be feeling, no matter who is killed. Um, you know, anytime that these individuals suffer the death of somebody, it hurts them all. They're like a family. It doesn't matter which member you kill. It's going to hurt people. But obviously, I think that Rick's group has learned its lesson. They've learned that Negan is bigger than what they thought. And if they attack and they try to take revenge, it's just going to come back and hit them. Uh, you know, when they were driving along the road and they saw that there were enough saviors that could block every road leading to the hilltop. I think there was at least 50 people, if not more, there. And then, of course, you have to wonder how many more are there? They don't know. There could very easily be another 50, 100. We have no idea, and Rick's group doesn't either. So even though they're going to want revenge, I don't think that it's possible right now. And I think that the other thing that they're going to see is that not necessarily everybody is going to be for uh, attacking the saviors. And that's one of the big concerns and part of the issue that happens in the comic books at this time is that there's not necessarily a unity of individuals that want to go after Negan. And you particularly see that with Gregory, um, the so-called leader of the Hilltop. He's not very interested in attacking uh, Negan because he made the deal with Negan. And even though Negan's killed a couple of his people, the fact remains that overall they're able to have their home and be safe because of that. Um, Negan may get a little out of control, but overall the deal has worked. And that's the thing that makes Negan a very unique villain and a very unique person. Unlike the governor who wants to control things, wants to be in power, and he'll do that by destroying anybody else, Negan's you know, goal is to bring these people under his control, wear them down physically, mentally, and emotionally enough that they won't want to attack him. And the psychology and the methods that Negan uses are very, very interesting in the comics. So I think that what we're going to see is exactly that. I think that we're going to see Rick's group realizing we can't attack. We can't do that. We learned our lesson. We are not necessarily the toughest individuals um, that are out here. We made the mistake of attacking Negan without really understanding who he was, and what he had. And as a result of that, we've now lost someone that we really, really cared about. And now we need to figure out what, what is best for us. What are we going to do? And I think that the group is going to give in to Negan. I think that, like in the comic books, Negan does come to the um, Alexandria safe zone, and he does take some of the supplies away from uh, Alexandria. That's what he does. And I think that is going to happen. I think that 
um, Rick is going to allow that. And the reason for that is because Rick wants Negan to believe <clears throat> that they have given in. That really is the best way to, you know, convince uh, people that you're defeated is to go along with them. Because the group realizes if we fight back, if we try to do something, it's just going to come back and, and hurt us even more. That's what Negan does. If you listen to him, things are fine. He wants you to live. He wants you to be able to live. You just have to give him some supplies. But if you don't listen to him, you run the risk of him using Lucille on somebody else you love and care about. So it's a very tough balance. Um, and it's something that Rick's group is really going to be concerned about. But all the while, I think they are going to want revenge. I mean, they're not going to let this go. Um, when you kill somebody that they really care about, um, it's not going to sit right with them. And they're definitely not going to let Negan go forever. I think they do have a plan. The question is, how long is it going to take for them to, to get to that point? And when they do, what's going to happen? Um, and I think that's a big question, uh, especially for the first half of season seven, is I think that we're going to see the group um, defeated, that they are going to give in, but the ultimate plan is to launch an attack at some point, that they are going to hit back at Negan, but they can't do it alone, and they can't do it without information. And a lot of the things that you see happening in the TV show <clears throat> are kind of leading up to that. We have the introduction of the kingdom. Um, we saw Carol and Morgan at the end of season six, they were uh, met by people from the kingdom. I presume it's them, um, these men in armor that were on horseback, which is very indicative of the kingdom. Um, we will come to uh, be introduced, I think, to Ezekiel, and we know that Ezekiel does not like Negan. Um, he goes along with the deal, kind of like how Gregory does. It's, it's kind of a similar um, feeling that well, I may not like it, but it's the best thing that I can do for my people. And Ezekiel does care about his people. He really does care about the well-being of individuals, which is why he goes along with the deal with Negan, but he doesn't like it. And Ezekiel's the kind of person who, given the right set of circumstances, he would launch an attack. He just doesn't have the resources. And what it's really going to take is Rick's group, um, the Hilltop, people from there, and the kingdom really coming together in a united way and deciding we've had enough. <clears throat> We're going to attack. That's what it's really going to take. And I think that's really going to be the overarching storyline of season seven, that it's really going to be an introduction of these three groups seeing how they feel, and then seeing what events lead them to deciding to attack the, um, the saviors. That's, I think, the overall goal. In more of my videos, I will, of course, be more specific. I'll be breaking down characters, um, maybe their storylines, seeing how things might uh, lead up. But that, I think, is the overall general idea of what the first half of Season 7 is going to be like. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think that's about right? Um, do you think that there might be some other things that might happen? Um, do you think something different could happen? Let me know. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. Have a very wonderful evening, and thank you very much for watching.